People are willing to do all sorts of wacky stuff to get a different sound. In this episode, we're modding an SM57, and we're not taking the easy way out. Coming up next. Help me out by subscribing and turning on your notifications. Leaving a comment or a like and sharing these videos with your friends really helps. YouTube buries videos that don't get watched by subscribers when they're first released, so thanks in advance for helping me out. There are a ton of videos and articles out there about the SM57 transformerless mod, and even more speculation by folks who've never heard it uh, about how they think it's gonna sound. Thankfully, it's not a difficult one to do. A heat gun or a pot of boiling water, a small screwdriver, and some very basic soldering tools are all you need to rip that step-up transformer out and connect the element directly to the XLR. If you're not up for that, there are even companies out there that charge around a $30 premium to rip the transformer out, void your warranty, and wire the element straight out for you. Nice work if you can get it. There are some audio examples in the mix of those videos you can watch, and if I've learned anything from the comments on those videos that do include examples, it's that people love to question the method, nobody's ever happy with the source material or the approach used in those examples. So how will we improve on this? I don't want to just rip the transformer out and call it a day, everybody's done that already. I'd like to add a switch so we can take the transformer in and out of circuit. This will do two things. One, it'll make it a lot easier to compare A to B without having to physically line the microphone up with a stock model or move the microphone to get them into the exact same position. And two, I'm hoping this will make it easier for you to try because I wanna send this mic out into the world to get your reactions. The idea will be that you'll test the mic, shoot some video, make some examples with your instrument of choice, and then send it on to the next person on the list. I've created a Google form that's linked below so you can sign up if you'd be interested in helping out with that. We can track the progress uh, on social media from each person, but then also compile all of those examples into a longer video down the line. And we'll see how far this goes, but it'll be interesting to get your take and get this mic out there so you can see how it works for you. After watching all the videos, my takeaway is that the result will be a noticeably darker sounding mic with significantly lower output. That step up transformer that Shure includes is responsible for both the step up and signal level, as well as the boost in top end clarity. You can find a great paper by Shure linked below all about transformers in microphones. So you got to get the transformer out either way. There's no way to get to the wiring that comes from the XLR up through the body without removing all of that glue. Uh, the transformer is glued in on top of its own secondary wiring that goes out to that XLR. So we're going to need to remove it all to access that and add a switch. So it's got to go. I went with the boil in a bag method, quickly giving up on the bag though. and ultimately wielding a set of chopsticks that happen to be close at hand to slowly pull the transformer free, trying not to scald myself on the molten hot glue. It's a pretty big mess when you get all of this out, but the glue does peel away and I was able to strip most of the excess back with uh, careful tweezering and an X-Acto knife. We'll need to drill a hole for the switch soon. A step drill bit works great as long as you make a center punch mark and pre-drill with a small bit slowly first to avoid it slipping off of the curved handle surface. Positioning the switch is a major hurdle with this one. The way the handle is cast, it tapers very thin and ends internally about an inch before the bottom of the casting. That leaves barely two inches of depth before the threads that accept the element start at the top. Making matters worse, the inside diameter is only a millimeter or two greater than the transformer is wide and the bottom of the element has those conductive pins sticking out. So maybe with a different type of switch we could take a different approach, but for this version we're just going to use what we've got. The wiring is very simple. We connect the element to both the transformer primary side and the switch. The center pins of the switch are wired to the XLR output and the last set of pins are wired to the secondary side or output side of the transformer. Make sure your polarity is consistent from the element out through the XLR and also every connection you make internally you're going to want to use some sort of heat shrink to prevent shorting uh, later on inside. 
it's a very tight squeeze going back together. And with this type of switch, it's going to need an extension to make this all work properly. My good friend Trevor, who you'll remember from way back in video number 43 about his custom K-Array clamps, as well as his What's In Your Kit video number 118, offered to try machining an extension for the mic in his shop. So hopefully that will work out. If that doesn't work, we might explore 3D printing something to fit in there. And I'm also looking at some different switch types as well as some aftermarket transformers that might be a little smaller. So maybe we could get this all together uh, with a smaller switch in the future without needing this extension. I really did want to keep the transformer in this version stock though, so we have an AB comparison, even if the handle and the body does have to be extended a little bit to accommodate that. So for the moment, just to verify this is all working, I've used an improvised solution. I've got a sticker and some E-tape here to hold it all together. It already failed the first time I tried this. Uh, it fell apart overnight on its own, but this one is pretty rugged. This is gonna be a super unscientific test, but I've got a couple of tracks and some tone as well. So using the test tone, I can see switching between uh, the transformer and the non-transformer, I'm losing just about 10 dB of gain. So we've recorded a couple of tracks and I just threw the switch between recording uh, with and without the transformer, no other changes. With that 10 dB of difference between the two, I also recorded a third take with 10 dB more gain applied at the microphone input. that's it for the moment on this one until we figure out this extension tube or I find a smaller switch and hopefully get some folks signed up on the Google form. So I'll have somebody to send it to when it's ready. So if you'd like to be a part of that, if you'd like to have some fun or try this mic out when it's ready, 
hit the link below and let me know. We're not gonna use those emails for anything else. They won't even go on to our mailing list. It's just for the SM57 test. Thanks to everybody who subscribes and supports the channel on Patreon. Links for everything are down in the description. I'll see you next time.